People tend to be afraid of bacteria and cooking meat to even rare a lot of cases, and especially when transitioning to a zero carb carnivore diet and eating organ meats and foods that are unfamiliar with. So let's try to understand everything from salmonella to E. coli to trichinosis, various parasites, worms, and we'll talk about med cow disease as well. So salmonella is probably the most heard about and maybe E. coli is heard about as well a lot in regards to contaminations. And most of the time we see that in actually vegetables and fruits because of either cross-contamination or the, the, they're growing it with manure that contains you know, that, that bacteria. So salmonella is unique in a sense that it only occurs in the digestive tract of chickens. And I can only theorize that this is just because of the filthy conditions that they've kept chickens in for dozens of years has, has just caused them to have this bacteria that doesn't really naturally occur in any other animals. You know, duck don't have it, any other poultry or game bird, they don't have salmonella in their digestive tract. So that's why I avoid chicken. That's why I tell people to avoid chicken. And you know, the only way I would eat it is if I raised it myself. And I mean, in that case, then it's pretty much like any other meat where it's pretty safe to, to eat it at any temperature. But chicken, unfortunately, is just one of those things where you have to cook it through really well, especially the organs. I've had a lot of people tell me on my channel that they eat well, I mean, yeah, your gut can kind of become adapted to any type of bacteria you're eating, but in the case of chicken, especially the grain-fed chicken and how we're raising them now, it's probably the last food you want to eat unless it's like a last resort. In regards to E. coli, it's in the digestive tract of every animal, uh, and humans as well. Humans have E. coli in their digestive tract. What makes E. coli harmful is how we raise our cattle. So. The acidity of the stomach rises because of how we feed them. We give them antibiotics. We give them, you know, a lot of negative things about their feed as well, from crude soy and meals and various corn and, and negative things in the feed make these animals sick. And the bacteria, the E. coli strain, becomes much stronger and more harmful. So when we consume that form of E. coli in that meat, that's what kills people and makes people sick. It's just a super strong bacteria that's meant to survive a very high acidic sick cow's digestive system. Uh, that explains why you could eat, you know, people have no problem eating, and even pe some people have adapted to that strain of E. coli too in their diet. They can eat, I've heard of people eating raw meat from the market all the time, but I've never done that myself. And it's, it's a, another thing like, like when I had a stool sample taken about a year ago, I actually tested positive for E. coli because all I was eating was pretty much raw beef. and. The E. coli levels in my stomach would test higher than a normal person, but again, the E. coli in grass-fed beef and certain animals, wild animals, is drastically different than the strains that are in conventional grain-fed beef. Those are two very, very different things. I mean, all, all of these things I'm talking about are also the reason why we see the organs and the fat and a lot of the parts of this animal that's fed this unnatural diet don't taste as good and they have bitter and off and astringent flavors. The next one, I guess, in regards to popularity of what people can get sick from would probably be, I mean, people are, are people really worried about trichinosis and pork? Uh, trichinosis is, hasn't really been a problem in pork recently. There was this like famous picture of a Chinese girl that ate raw pork for years and like she was completely infected with these cysts, but that's why I don't eat raw pork. I mean, yeah, one time I had pastured pork, I, I don't even know if I deleted the video, but I ate like a some pastured pork that was ground up raw. Uh, trichinosis occurs in animals that are scavengers and foragers and it's known from animals that eat garbage. And it's especially, most of the cases of trichinosis, I think like all of them reported in the past years, 90% of them have been from wild boar as well as bear meat. So unless you're hunting wild boar or bear, I wouldn't be too concerned about trichinosis. Uh, and the thing about like bacon and pork and stuff, you kind of have to cook. You kind of want to cook it through all the way just to remove that possibility. I'm not. I don't think they test every single animal for trichinosis. You usually send in like a piece of the tongue to test for it. And for those of you who don't know what trichinosis is, it's a parasitic larva that burrows through your intestinal tract into muscle tissue, causes spasms and cysts, lays eggs, uh, and there's no real cure for it. Once you get it, you have it for life. And it just seems to be a parasite that a lot of people live with and. You can get various concentrations of it in, like, I know Steve Rinella on the Mediator podcast has it. I guess we'll touch on worms in general since we're on the topic of parasites. 
Uh, liver flukes and stuff that I hear people mention all the time, I've never seen. I don't think you'll ever be sold liver that has a fluke on it. Uh, it it's very easy to see and those that tends to be a problem in third world countries and just pretty much any country outside of the like first world. Uh, those might be a concern but I've never really done a lot of research on them just because it's not an issue. In regards to roundworms, nematodes, as well as tapeworms and fish, roundworms and nematodes are the worms that were in my salmon uh, when I purchased it, and those are not really harmful to humans. They can't burrow through the intestinal wall. They can cause gut irritation, but uh, they can't really harm humans. Those are the like the non-segmented, clear worms that you might see in your medium-sized ocean fish, or I don't know if they occur in freshwater fish either, and. The thing is, those are killed when the meat, the fish is frozen at a certain temperature for a certain period of time. They're also killed through cooking. But either way, I don't really want to eat dead worms or live worms. I don't really care. I just don't want to eat any worms. So when I like go through my fish and fillet it, you know, I kind of the worms tend to be concentrated in the belly, in the tail, in the organs. Uh, that's definitely something to be wary of if you buy and eat a lot of fish. Uh, more so the larger fish. I. I've eaten hundreds of mackerel and I've never seen uh, a worm in these smaller ocean fish. Uh, I've only seen it in the fish like salmon, uh, just any large ocean fish is in the cod are known to have these worms as well. And then the larger worms like the tapeworms, I've actually never seen uh, tapeworm cysts or larvae because they tend to be so large in, in the fish and uh, you guys would have to google that. I've, I mean to me a tapeworm infestation in a fish would never get past the fishmonger, at least uh, at least to my understanding. So it's not really a concern. Uh, I mean, I check out videos on that, Google that, uh, check out my videos on that. It's, it's definitely not really uh, a concern in regards to what most people are eating. And then, yeah, I mean, if you're really paranoid, you could always heat, cook it or freeze it. But at, at the end of the day, uh, those worms are not harmful to humans. The, se the segmented worms, the tapeworms, that's where the issue is. But as I said, I don't, I've never seen fish that has that, those tapeworms in it. I've heard very few cases of tapeworm infestation from, uh, and it, it tends to be from Japan and, the, and outside of the United States. We don't really, uh, I'm not really sure how many problems we have. But again, it's, it's a matter of, you know, you got to ask yourself three questions. Did you fillet the fish yourself? Did you examine it? Did you cook it or was it frozen? Those are the three things you have to analyze and see your risk and the size of the fish is also something to consider. Uh, I guess we can move on to uh, chronic wasting disease and BSC, bovine, sponge form, something, uh, just Creutzfeldt Jakob's disease in cows and also talk about scrappy and pig and uh, lamb and goat. So this is Creutzfeldt Jakob's disease which in humans occurs as a genetic mutation and it's a terrible, terrible disease. It's a the prion protein is a prion. It's a prion disease, and prions are these proteins that you just can't get rid of them. You can't if you threw them in a volcano. I think they would survive. If you froze them in a, a, like negative a thousand degrees, I think they survive. You can't kill these things. It's not a living thing. It's the proteins that fold and look into prion diseases. So there's a couple. The, the two forms that humans can get that are of concern are the human variant Creutzfeldt Jakob's disease that occurs naturally in humans and then you can get it if you eat human brain tissue or like you're let's say you're a surgeon and you lick a scalpel or something of someone that had it you could get it that way or you could get it from BSC from cows because the form in cows mutated because we fed cows cattle meal and then that mutated the disease and it made it occur in cattle and that's also why a lot of the cattle we slaughter now are always before two or three years of age because if a cow is a cow cannot get this disease until I think like three years into its life. So in regards to being concerned about consuming beef and brain and spinal cord, it's not just in those parts of the animal. That's where it's concentrated the most, but it's in all tissue of the animal. And most people that got mad cow disease did not get it from the brain or spinal cord. They got it from the meat. Uh, but it's, there haven't been any cases in the United States from meat ever. No one's ever gotten it in the United States. They've gotten it from other countries and they came to the United States and then they had it. And uh, it, it really is not a concern. Uh, there haven't, it's like a 
one of the biggest blown up things that is a non-issue. There were some problems with it in the UK where they fed those cows the cattle meal and people got sick and, and contracted the disease and that's a really, really horrific way to die. Probably one of the worst ways to die. Uh, and then, I mean, the, the form in humans that just develops is hereditary. In regards to contracting it from other animals, it's not possible. Uh, we, in, from pig brain or sheep brain, scrappy is what it's called in sheep, it's never been shown to be able to be obtained from those animals and humans. Uh, same thing with chronic wasting disease in deer. It's never been shown to be transmissible to humans, although there was an excellent podcast on chronic wasting disease for literally like two, three hours where this very intelligent guy talk, who's an expert in the field talks about chronic wasting disease and answers a lot of questions and he was saying how there was one, f and there's different forms of chronic wasting disease, there's different various like compositions of the protein and one of them was transmissible to mice so uh, we don't really know a lot about that yet and I mean overall to sum things up I guess in regards to old bacterial and parasite concerns the the main issue here is the butchering facility and the processing cross-contamination is where most of these problems well, all of these problems really occur through cross-contamination of the guts uh, with the meat or prior slaughtering stuff that happens with the meat and it gets cross-contaminated that's where the main issue is with bacteria and then the second issue is in regards to parasites it's where you're buying your meat and if it like in the case of fish if the fishmonger is doing his job properly it's never really inherently a problem with consuming the part of the animal in the case of muscle meat flesh fat you know that bacteria is primarily con is concentrated in the intestines of the animal so the only way you can get it is cross-contamination and then the parasites and, and all that other stuff it's you have to understand where the bacteria occurs on the animal how, how the animal would get the parasite and gauge on where your risks are I mean in the context of you know if your meat is like completely infested with salmonella or, or E. coli the temperatures they say it takes to kill those bacteria at tend to be way above what most people cook their meat at you literally have to kill it Same, but not nearly as much with salmonella and E. coli as you have to do with diseases like trichinosis like trichinosis you will never like it's very very difficult to cook out trichinosis it has to be heated at a, above 165 for like a period of time it's the meat would be inedible at that point and then in regards to the parasites same thing it has to be frozen at an incredibly low temperature or cooked at a fairly high temperature for a long period of time uh, most people don't have freezers that go that cold and they don't cook the meat the fish long enough to kill it at that temperature so what I'm getting at is Guys, if your meat's contaminated with this bacteria, you're probably gonna get it anyway. And the this and let me give you my anecdotes. So, although I don't recommend consuming raw foods, I've been eating raw meat, raw organs, raw dairy, raw eggs for six years now, and I've never once gotten sick from eating a food. The only problem I had was I shucked some oysters and I froze them, and I got sick from the oysters. Uh, really bad food poisoning from oysters a day later. But in regards to organs, eggs, every, anything I've eaten, I've literally never had any stomach problems related to this diet. Uh, that being said, I've always sourced my meat and my food from either local farms or straight from purveyors. I've Maybe a handful of times I've bought meat from the supermarket and have eaten it raw, but it was always usually grass-fed pasture raised from New Zealand or Australia. So. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this brushes up any concerns you have. If you guys are going to start bringing up diseases like things like Campylobacter and other obscure bacteria, then that a lot of those things are like very specific scenarios that I haven't really heard of in, in a lot of contexts. And, and another thing to keep in mind, guys, if you ever eat a food, you, your stomach has to adjust to the bacteria. So don't go and out and eat you know half a pound of raw elk liver the first time you get it. Uh, it's def definitely something to keep in mind when you're buying these foods. Uh, I mean, I didn't really touch on eggs that much, but that's that's cross contamination from the salmonella on the outside of the egg from the chicken poop. Um, is that everything? I hope so. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you feel like I miss anything or you'd like to see a video on something else, let me know. You know, it's it's interesting. Like, if um, I, I really should mention this. 
go on the CDC website, the Center for Disease Control website, and look at the occurrences of Salmonella, E. coli, parasites. Look at how rare these diseases are and what foods they actually do occur from. And, and this should, I'll put those links in the description. This should address any concern you have about consuming raw foods. So, uh, you know, share the video, guys. Uh, yeah, we're doing the we're doing the vegan gains debate in about uh, 30 minutes.